We're going to look here at the derivatives of trigonometric functions. Now for now we're just focusing on the six basic trig functions. There are some rules for inverse trig. That will be in another video perhaps. But these are the rules for the derivative of six basic trig functions. And it is very, very important that you memorize these because truthfully, these are easier and less work than lots of other derivatives we have to take in calculus as long as you have these rules memorized. One thing that can help is if you look at them in pairs. So for example, the derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So you notice tangent and cotangent both have a squared in their answer. Tangent goes with secant squared. Cotangent goes with cosecant squared. Or secant x, the derivative is secant x tangent x. And the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant x cotangent x. So the only difference between secant and cosecant is there are there's a negative sign in the answer for cosecant and it's cos. It goes from secant x tangent x to cosecant x cotangent x. Also, if you notice, all of those that start with a c, the derivative of cosine, the derivative of cosecant, the derivative of cotangent, all those derivatives begin with a negative. So if the original function starts with a c, its derivative will be negative. So let's try this out. First of all, find the derivative if y equals 3 cosine x minus 4 tangent x. The coefficients in this case just stick around. So for example, in this one, the derivative of 3 cosine x, the 3 just stays, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Same here with the 4. The 4 just stays and the derivative of tangent is secant squared x. Next up, differentiate f of x equals 3x cubed plus 7 cosecant x. So here we're mixing polynomial pieces and trig. The derivative of 3x cubed, we use the power rule, multiply by the exponent, subtract 1 from the exponent. And the derivative of cosecant, we leave the 7. The derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant x cotangent x. So if you have the rules memorized, truly, these are very quick, very easy. There will be times where you have to use something like the product rule, as with this one. I do want to try to make you see the difference, though, as to why we do need the product rule for this one, but we did not need the product rule for, say, this piece right here. Because both of them, we see something's being multiplied. The difference is, with this first example, the 3 cosine x, it's just a number, just a constant being multiplied by the cosine. So since it's just 3 being multiplied by cosine x, we don't need the product rule. But on this example, we have 2x times secant x. So it's a variable, or something with a variable, 2x, being multiplied by the trig function secant x. So we'll use the product rule. I'll call the first piece f and the second piece g. Find f prime and g prime, kind of know the rule. The derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x. Then, just like I do before, I do f prime times g plus f times g prime. Here's our last example. This one will require the quotient rule because we are dividing two things that have variables with them. And we're also combining two different kinds of functions. We have an exponential, 2e to the x on top, and trig on the bottom with the cotangent being involved. 
So, first of all, the numerator is the F. The denominator is the G. F prime is just 2 e to the x, since the derivative of e to the x is itself. G prime, the derivative of 3 is 0. The derivative of cotangent x is negative cosecant squared x. And then we just apply the rule like we had before. F prime times G minus F times G prime all divided by G squared. And the only simplifying you may have to do on this is since there is a negative here and here, we could combine them, just make this plus and just change this to times cosecant squared x, pulling the negative out front, making it a plus right there. That's the only simplifying you may have to do. When we've got functions mixed up like this, you usually don't need to simplify or anything like that. So that should get you going, and good luck.